Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. The Lord Most High. The Lord Most High. Great and faithful is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then since my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. How great thou art, O Lord. Gracious, wonderful, sovereign God, we welcome you in this place. We say, Holy One of Israel, how great thou art. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. You are worthy of all praise, and to you our lives we raise. Thou art awesome in this place, Almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to our King. Lord, you are great and you are almighty. All honor, all praise, all glory to you, O King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy, righteous, powerful, awesome, glorious name. Who is like unto our God? Who is like unto our God? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to our King. Good morning, Holy Spirit of God, and welcome. Welcome into our presence. Welcome into our day. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Take full control, all of you and none of us. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, people of God. Good morning, precious, precious saints of God. Hallelujah. Please remember to share as you come on. Please remember to share, remember to share. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am back and I am so grateful to Pastor Marsha for what she has done these days that she carried the baton it was so amazing hallelujah she did an awesome job of um just running and a, a, a back stretch that was <laughs> uh way beyond what anyone could hope or imagine that's how you know that this woman of god is filled with the spirit of the of the living god excuse me because she is able to just pick up in a heartbeat and go like there is no tomorrow and so we give God thanks and praise for her and we continue to, to ask you to just pray for her that all will be well with every area and every aspect hallelujah of her life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth hallelujah hallelujah I'm I'm going ahead and and, um, and sharing as well myself so i don't want to just ask you to do something that i am not doing as well so i'm sharing the broadcast so that others can be a part of what god is doing in this time so all you have to do is press share hallelujah so that we can pray for a lot more people hallelujah glory to god most high yes hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. I worship your holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship your holy name Bless the Lord Oh my soul Oh my soul I worship your holy name Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Lord, 
that I worship your holy name. Yes, I worship your holy name. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him and the heavens and the earth adore him. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. You are awesome in this place, almighty God. You are worthy of all praise. To you, our lives we raise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. Many are the blessings that you give unto me. Blessings overflowing like the mighty sea. Lord, I want to thank you for your love for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you ever thought of me. I also want to thank everyone who prayed for me during my time of fighting the battle with the sinus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It was a prayer heard in heaven and a prayer that God responded to. And so I give God thanks to this family that I have uh, that watches over our lives, our marriage, our family, our ministry, and our ministry partners and others in the family. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, my brother. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Early risers for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Uh, again, as persons come in, I just want to express gratitude to Pastor Marsha for the, the days that she has held down the fort, held the baton, did an awesome job. The reports and the, um, the accolades have been coming in about how amazing she has done. And I myself have seen it, experienced it, and have been blessed by it. And so we know for sure that the Spirit of God is not just in her, but working through her as well. And so we want to, you know, just show our gratitude to her for uh, picking up the, the baton and running an awesome leg. Not as a substitute, but as a qualified member of the team. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. You see how it's so early in the morning and I'm, and I'm sweating. Oh, my goodness. Guys, I'm begging you, please, don't do anything to go to hell. Because if on the earth here where we have fans and AC, it is so hot still. I, don't, I can't tell you how hell is going to be when we don't have fan and AC. Amen? So make sure it's heaven you are pray and not hell. Because it would not be well. Hell will make you so hot you swell. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, Brother George. Oh my goodness. It's so good to see you, my bona fide brother in the Lord. God bless you, mighty man of valor, deacon. I bless the Lord for you. Hallelujah. Okay. So now that we've done all the, 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 the um the, the work uh we have shared. Thank you, Sister K. God bless you. Um now that we have done the the, the um the, the sharing hallelujah and we are ready to get into the matter of at hand this is deliverance thursday and uh let me just say for the record that um as pastor Marsha started out with uh submissive uh, our teaching how to submit we are going to uh follow up on those five five or six elements from first peter chapter five um submission and the rest of the, the, the elements that God has shown us that we need to, to follow through. But um, before I go to that, I want to finish all the, the, the elements that are foundation pillars of the Dominate series. 
And so remember, I listed them when we started the Dominate series. In Genesis, it was the reason to dominate. In Luke 10, 19, it was the gift to dominate. Uh, then they had Romans 6, Romans 6, 18 to 14. I didn't have um, anything written there. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, the fourth one was First Peter 5, 5 to 8, what we need to dominate. And then Daniel 7, 14, which is what we're going to do this morning. And that is how we got authority to dominate. And then the last one tomorrow, hopefully, Ephesians 1, 17 to 23, the power to dominate. Amen. And so after we have finished, after we finish these, the pillars of dominate, then I'm going to go in, go back into for July, um, at least the first part of July, uh, the first Peter 5 scripture and look at all of the elements that we had highlighted in dominating um, submissive uh, and then humility and then grace and then uh, what was the other um, anxiety uh, yep um, self-control and alert that's it so we're gonna go so we're still gonna go into to all of those even though pastor Marsha did submission to a, uh, did a maximum job with submission uh, and so I won't have to go into submission anymore I will just pick up from humility and then grace and continue on so make sure that you're making note of these things as we follow through and grow in God hallelujah 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 praise the lord so it's deliverance thursday hallelujah and we're going to be i'm hoping to get into the word uh pretty quickly so i want to just have a time of prayer um as we normally do and then try to get into the word by the latest quarter to six or thereabouts so that we can complete these two last pillars and um and, and finish those the pillars for the month of june and then carry over amen so um I, I i hope that i don't go on a long um tirade of prayer this morning by the spirit because i i love to pray sometimes when i pray i lose track of time and so um i need to 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 just be mindful of that this morning so that we can get this 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 word done this morning amen praise god from whom all blessings flow eternal father we thank you and we ask that you will bless our land bless the place where each and every one of us are domiciled guard us with thy mighty hand keep us free from evil powers and be our light through countless hours to our leaders O great defender grant through wisdom from above let justice and truth be ours forever in the land where your fourth watch people your fourth watch family are domiciled the land that you love the land that we love and so we call them by name we call them by name for we have no shame for the place where you have placed us our uh, father jamaica 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 land that you love united states great britain canada colombia venezuela australia africa all the continent of africa all the other all the asian countries all the eastern middle eastern countries european countries whoever is represented in this fourth watch family we declare it is the land that god loves father we ask that you will teach us true respect for all that you will stir our response to duty's call that you'll strengthen us the weak to cherish and that you'll give us vision lest we perish knowledge that is so valuable oh father send us send us heavenly father and grant us true wisdom from above let justice and truth be ours forever in this land that we love hallelujah 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 oh lord hallelujah to you oh god in this kingdom in this land that we love hallelujah thank you jesus O oh, Father in heaven, we ask, O oh God, that like Isaiah 11 and, two, 11 and verse 2 says, Hallelujah, let your spirit be upon every fourth watch family member this morning. Let your spirit be upon us as the spirit of wisdom and understanding, as the spirit of counsel and might, as the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. We ask, O oh God, that you will search us as the songwriter says, Search me, O oh God. 
I know my heart today. Try me, O Savior. Know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked ways in me and cleanse me from every sin and set me free hallelujah hallelujah that's our cry unto you this morning O lord jesus christ of nazareth search us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet search our innermost thoughts search every fiber of our being search us to the depth of our souls search us O lord and take control search us O god almighty for all of sin and come short of your glory lord let no presumptuous or no hidden sin be hiding in any corner or crevice of our lives search the very fiber the very cell the very tissue search our very dna O god almighty and see if there's anything hiding in any corner or any crevice that when the enemy comes he will find something in us for when we are filled with you lord when the enemy comes like he did with you he will find nothing and so lord jesus christ we submit and surrender everything that we are to you today we place every element and aspect of our lives on the table on the altar of sacrifice and we say lord jesus christ search us and find out search us and cancel lust of the flesh lust of the eyes pride of life search us and, ha and, and deliver us from rejection from unforgiveness from any evil or wicked ways search us O god almighty and uproot and destroy rebuke and discharge anything in us that will keep us out of your presence Oh Lord Jesus Christ this morning we lay ourselves bare before you and we say father father let our lives be a reflection of your spirit and not of flesh not of this world system father let no spirit of compromise be our portion in the mighty name of jesus we will be steadfast immovable unshakable rooted and grounded in your word for your will and for your purpose sake may our lives bring glory to you O lord jesus christ Oh Father, let the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord be our portion this day and every day for the rest of our lives and let the fruit of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit be the reason people are gathering around us, coming to us, <coughs> excuse me, so that they might know that we are truly representatives of the living God in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. hallelujah 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 so i just want to declare some stuff i know some of you have bought your prayer rain and so we're going to just declare a few things over each person this morning from page 220 from page 220 so if you have your prayer rain i want you to grab it quickly it must always be beside you where you pray or where you have devotion if you have your prayer rain please turn with me to page 220 hallelujah hallelujah we're going to just be declaring some things crushing the head of the oppressor is the title crushing the head of the oppressor and so for a few minutes we're going to go into some stuff that the oppressor has been doing to us to our family and even to our generation before and we want to crush his head to make sure that he never comes back that he never affects us again in the now or in the future or our generations to come amen hallelujah because we have dominion remember we have been given the dominion mandate and our job is to dominate when adam was given the dominion mandate god brought everything every animal every insect everything that he had made and gave it to adam and said i have given you a dominion mandate now take dominion over these things dominate and adam dominate and named them adam dominate and took authority over them adam dominate and told them what to do and where to go and so it is our time by the spirit of the living god adam did that in the natural where he named the things and we have been given the same mandate in spiritual things to take dominion in the realm of the spirit over what has been named and what has not been named come on glory to god amen 
Hallelujah. And so it is time for us to dominate. For too long, Satan has been dominating our lives, our health, our finance, uh, our family, our marriages. Everything Satan has been dominating and God has just been shaking his head and saying, Wow, can you imagine if when I gave Adam the dominion mandate to, to name all the things in the garden, if he didn't, if he had allowed the serpent to take control of all of those things, imagine what a lion would be called now. Maybe a lion would be a hippopotamus and maybe a, a hippopotamus would be an elephant. They would all be confused outside of what God wanted. But Adam did at least that part and look at what happened with the one little part that he didn't follow through on and look at the price we're paying today and so we I'm, i bring that to our attention because i want us to realize the importance of dominating taking dominion over our family over our household over everything that concerns us our jobs and so i'm just warming you up again as i as i normally do saying that we must always have, have at the front of our minds the need to dominate the need to dominate domination is not a want domination is not something that is uh, uh, we do periodically it is something that is required it is a need just like we need to breathe we need food we need shelter we need clothes these are needs that if we don't have them they consider us homeless uh, vagrants vagabonds they consider us outcasts they consider us um, in, 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 in abstract poverty if we don't have these things they consider us um, unhealthy if we're not breathing in proper air and so dominate come on people of God understand because the world is more or environment is more spiritual than natural and so as we learn to dominate our lives get better as we learn to dominate things that God has released for us come on the blessings of the Lord make rich and add no sorrow and so the blessings of the Lord has not been coming as frequent and as full flowing as it should because we have not been dominating the things the elements the principalities the powers the spiritual wickedness in high places the rulers of darkness that have been there like the prince of persia was trying to block and to dominate daniel's angels the prince of persia that was trying to block and to dominate the children of israel in persia when uh, esther and mordecai was there uh, come on hallelujah haman was a prince of persia in today's day Come on, hallelujah. And so we, we, we're saying that unless we take the initiative like Mordecai and Esther to dominate, uh, not only us, but our nation could perish. Are you hearing me? When Esther had doubts, when Esther had fears, when Esther was saying, I, I, I don't know that I can manage this. Uh, and, and Mordecai was pressing in. Mordecai had the vision of how to dominate. Mordecai says, listen to me carefully. If you think that you are going to get away, if you think you're going to remain silent and you are going to live, you're going to die too because you're a Jew. And who could who to tell if you have not been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this? I'm saying to you, Kerry and Bailey, you have been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. Uh, come on, Sherry Fisher. Sherry, what's that? Sherry? Sherry Fisher, 949-11. You've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. Come on, you on, 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 um, on TikTok. All of you on TikTok. Come on, glory to God. On Hallelujah, Arrows Internet Radio. I want to tell you this morning that you have been brought to the kingdom. You have been born into the kingdom. You have been given the dominion mandate for such a time as this. For never before has the spirit of destruction, has the spirit of Haman been so loose. He's running through the governments. He's running through legislature. He's running through presidents and prime ministers. He's running through the entire place and influencing them as he tried to influence the king he wants to destroy the nations of this world but we have been given the power like Esther and Mordecai to back him up to encourage people to begin to fight for their lives fight for their livelihoods and so a few people have been starting to push back against the, 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 the mandate that has been issued by Satan because there's a dominion mandate issued by Satan and a dominion mandate issued by God and 
And so we must understand our dominion mandate and know that he has given us power to tread upon every mandate that comes, whether they come as a serpent or a scorpion, and over all the power of him who gives mandates to others to try and destroy us, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. But if we sit back idly and not take dominion and not dominate, then we will be dominated. And so we have been dominated by sickness, by cancer, by witchcraft, by all manner of evil concupiscence. We have been dominated for years and now they are trying to dominate our children. So they have come after us and they have left us with poverty, lack and insufficiency. They have left us, they have infiltrated our churches. They have placed uh, contamination on our, on our pulpits. Uh, they have contaminated our Bibles. They have taken over and are taking out things out of our Bibles, are condemning and destroying our Bibles. Uh, they have done a tremendous work to try and set back the work of God. But the Lord Jesus Christ says, uh, upon the rock of this revelation of the dominion mandate, uh, of the ability to dominate, uh, I have built my church, uh, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, for I I have some people that shall rise up in the fourth watch hour, says the Lord. I have some people that shall rise up and believe. They shall rise up and receive. They shall rise up and cleave. And the devil will have to leave, says the Spirit of the living God. I am telling you this morning by the Spirit of God that we have been given the charge to charge in and to take back what the enemy has stolen. I went to the enemy's camp like David and I took back what the devil has stolen from us. It is our time to dominate. It is time to appreciate that God's power, God's word cannot return void. God's mandate is that Haman must die and Mordecai must take over. It is our time to take over, people of God. We got to get excited about the position that the enemy is sitting in that belongs to us. And we got to say, no, that's my chair. That's my office. That's my glory. Oh, come on, somebody. Jesus died and gave us the champion position. He gave us the position on top of the podium. He gave us the big trophy. And so we have allowed Satan to be parading and taking selfies and photographs with our trophy. He has been taking pictures in our house. He's been living and sleeping on our king size bed. He's been driving our nice car. He's been spending from our bank account. But I'm here to tell you this morning, I come back from the place where he tried to keep me locked up but prayer has set me free like Peter and I'm come to tell you this morning get excited because we're about to take back what the enemy has stolen from us do I sound like an evangelist this morning because I feel like one I'm saying to you this morning get excited because it's time for us to win it's time for us to drive out the enemy when the enemy when the, the armies are went after the children of Israel uh, upon the decree that was signed by the king's ring or uh, by Mordecai's hand. Uh, the children of Israel were able to take up arms uh, and to defend themselves uh, against the attacks that the enemy was coming against them with. Uh, I'm saying to you this morning, the king's signet ring uh, has signed your document uh, and it has said, come on people of God, whether you're on Facebook, uh, whether you're on YouTube, uh, whether you're on Instagram, uh, whether you're on TikTok, whether you're on Arrow's internet radio, I say to you this morning, the mandate has gone forth. The decree has been given. You have been given authority and power to dominate, to pull your sword and shield, to dust off your armor, and to put on and get ready today. Because today we dominate. Today we take back. Today we pursue, overtake, and recover all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody should get encouraged this morning. Jump up and begin to say, God, I'm ready to go to war. I'm going to war for my day. I declare that good news is my portion today. I declare that every enemy of my soul is vanquished and perished today. I bury every assignment of the enemy today. I destroy in the realm of the spirit the enemy's GPS today. The enemy shall not bless me. I declare that not only am I blessed, my household is blessed, my family, my bloodline is blessed. I declare that my community is blessed. My country is blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I live here, come on, declare it as I declare it with you. 
as I live here in this upper part of San Andrew, as I live here in Mona Heights, I declare that Mona Heights is free from every demon and devil. I shut down every witch's coven. Come on, somebody, follow me as I go. You don't have to say Mona because you don't live in Mona. But come on, Joan Jones, that place in Florida where you live. Come on, Quinda, that place in Florida where you live, wherever you're living, just begin to speak now from this dominion mandate that we have been given and take dominion over your atmosphere. Begin to speak some things over your atmosphere. Come on, glory to God. Because your, your atmosphere is the first place that is affected. Come on, can I teach you just a little bit as you're declaring? Your atmosphere is set first and then it matriculates down to you. And so the clouds, just like rain, the clouds are set over our heads first and then the rain comes. And co after the rain comes, then comes the flood and the destruction. But it first has to have clouds. And so I'm saying to you this morning, hear me carefully, people of God. We have the power to visit the clouds of darkness, the clouds of wickedness that are forming over our heads and to stop it from raining upon us. Because when the rain comes, then comes the flood. And when the flood comes, then comes the destruction. So when we ignore the clouds, come on, we are embracing the destruction. Can I teach you something this morning by the spirit of the living God? So let's not ignore the clouds. Let's begin to fight from when others don't think it's necessary to fight. Let's begin to discern that the dark clouds are coming and that will lead to destruction. And so dark clouds over Florida, dark clouds over London, dark clouds over Great Britain, dark clouds over Toronto, dark clouds over Canada, dark clouds over Kingston, dark clouds over Jamaica. I rebuke and discharge you. I blow you away by fire. I call forth the breath of God. And I say every dark cloud over my family, every dark cloud over my bloodline, every dark cloud over the burger, the Beckford, the Crooks, and the Wade name, I break your powers. I send you back from whence you came. I send you out to deep sea in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, people of God. We have been allowing the enemy to take dominion over our families, over our communities, and they have run rampant through and is trying to destroy our very next generation. They're going after our children. And so every dark cloud of the immoral, uh, illicit, wicked groups and, 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 and organizations that have been formed with some weird names that have designed and with some weird colors that they have stolen with a desire to destroy our families family blood, our family lines, our children lines. They have been they have been set to destroy. They are dark clouds, but we are able to blow away those dark clouds. Come on, somebody. Are you with me? Jesus says, I've given you power. I've given you power. What more do you need? You have power to dominate. You've been given a dominion mandate. And so we must dominate this day in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us get to war, people of God. You don't have to go out and make noise. You don't have have to jump up and down you don't have to let everybody know that you are blowing away dark clouds. You just got to know, one, that you've been given the dominion mandate. Two, that you have the power of the Holy Spirit in you to dominate. And that you know what you need to dominate. So one, you need to know you have the mandate. Two, you need to know by whom you are able to dominate. That's the Holy Spirit. And you need to know what you need to dominate. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Amen. And so once we know these three things in particular, we are already on the road. So one, if you put it in the context of a regular soldier, the soldier needs to be to, to know that he has been given the authority as a soldier. Amen. Two, he needs to know what his weaponry that he has access to. He has access to a to an AK-47 or an M16 or an AR-15 along with a sidearm, a 9mm or a Beretta, whichever one, and, um, and magazines. And he has access to, 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 um, to, to the bombs and all these kinds of things. And then he needs to know who his enemy is and where they are. Come on, somebody. We're soldiers. We have been ingratiated into the army of God. We have been given a, a mandate that says you are now soldiers. You have authority. You have power. Come on, you've been given the, the, the weapon of the word. Oh, come on, holy ones, holy ones, holy ones, holy ones. Hallelujah. You've been given the weapon of the word. A gun that cannot run out of shots or bombs. Hallelujah. And your enemy 
is the enemy of the kingdom of God. Demons and devils, witches and warlocks, secret societies, every organization that raises itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and against the righteousness of the word of God. All of them are our enemies. We know who our enemies are. So why are they still winning when we have the mandate, we have the weaponry, and we know who we're fighting? Why do they still seem like they're winning? Because we have taken all of what God has given us and we have still sat on it. But today, no more. Today, hallelujah, no more. We're going to pursue, overtake, and recover all. Come on. May the spirit that was upon David when he was at Ziklag be upon every member of this family this morning. May our strength be, up, be, be unveiled. May our new weaponry be unveiled. May the spirit of a living God begin to shine and to glow and to empower us like a generator starting up. May we be started up with power. May on common anointing fall afresh upon every member of this family in the mighty name in the matchless name of the lord jesus christ of nazareth i release the glow of the glory of god upon each and every one of you that you might be put on show against the enemies of your community the enemies of your nation the enemies of your family in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i impart by decree i impart by the laying on of hands the gifts hallelujah required to take dominion over God, over the, uh, the works of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, glory to God. It's our time, people of God. It's our time. It's our time. Hallelujah. It's our time to take dominion. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the words of the Nike slogan, just do it. Let's get ready. Let's do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, from, this, from these words, O God Almighty, that has been written by your Son, hallelujah, in the prayer reign, page 220, we say, O Lord, enough is enough. Enough is enough. We have suffered enough. We have been held back enough. We have been dormant enough. We have been stagnated enough. We have been imprisoned enough. We have been in lack enough. We have been sick enough. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare and decree that let every hidden infirmity in our bodies, every spiritual infirmity, every sickness infirmity, every infirmity against our finances, every infirmity against our marriage, every sickness spirit that has come against our mindset, our will, or our emotion, every infirmity, O God Almighty, by any means necessary. Necessary. We declare that enough is enough and it's time to get rough. It's time to get tough. And we say every infirmity that come against our physical body, uh, that come against our spiritual life, that come against our marriages, that come against our finances, that come against our future and our purpose, we reject you and we command you to die by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Depart now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We set the fire of God against every plot, plan, scheme, and trap to release infirmities against us of every kind in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Oh, for the info, for, for the record, we're starting, for those who are following, we're starting from verse, from number seven, from number seven. Hallelujah. On page 220 of the prayer reign, we're starting from number seven. So next is number eight. Father God Almighty, we ask that you will let all evil rivers and shrines working against us receive the fire of God. Every evil river and shrines that is washing away, washing away our blessing, washing away our family, washing away our future spouse, washing away our resources, washing away our mindset, washing away our faith. Hallelujah. Father, let every shrine set up, O God Almighty, to destroy our works, to destroy your, our purpose in this kingdom of God. Father, let it receive. Hallelujah. Fire, hallelujah, fire, fire, fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let fire come to every river and every shrine that has been designed to take away what is rightfully ours in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Our Father God, we say, O oh Lord, give us a miracle that would dumbfound the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, by your holy angels this morning, I ask you to dispatch to every household, every, every space. <coughs> Excuse me. I ask you to dispatch to every household, every home, every space, every place, 
anywhere that Fourth Watch family members are this morning. Those that are true Fourth Watch family members, blessed and highly favored, called by you, anointed and appointed by you, filled with the Spirit of God and is walking according to your will and purpose. I ask you, O God Almighty, by your holy angels, visit each person now. Visit their household. Visit their homes. Visit their space. Visit where they are and cause a dumbfounding miracle to manifest upon them in the name of Jesus. A miracle of healing. A miracle of deliverance. A miracle of blessing. A miracle of favor. A miracle, O God Almighty, of breakthrough. A miracle of something that they have been believing you for, that they have not seen yet god almighty by your holy angels let a dumb founding confounding miracle manifest in your people today in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth father god almighty like you did for elijah like you did for elisha if i be a man of god today called according to your will and purpose i ask you by your grace and mercy not because we are good and perfect and deserving but lord god almighty let your word that says you will grant Grant us the desires of our heart. This morning we desire a dumbfounding, confounding miracle to manifest in every person that is in this family according to your will and purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I speak to those on, on Instagram. I speak to those on Facebook. I speak to those on TikTok and those on Arrow's Internet Radio. If you are hearing me now, I declare hallelujah. And those on YouTube a little later on, I declare and decree that a dumbfounded miracle have been released to thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Before this week is out, I declare a dumbfounding miracle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let your hand of glory be upon your people in the mighty name of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let a miracle that would dumbfound our enemies be manifested in the name of Jesus. Father, by your spirit, I cast down every roadblock hindering our progress. Oh, Father God, every roadblock in the spirit and even in the natural, every roadblock, everything that is blocking our promotion, blocking our getting married, blocking our marriages from getting deeper and more intimate and closer, blocking our children from coming into the fullness of your goodness, every demonic blockade that have been set up even in our homes, in our community. Father God, this morning we wage war against them. This morning we dominate every spiritual blockade, every natural blockade we say God we are dominating like a bulldozer runs through and push over the dirt God Almighty like a big Mack truck burrows through and hits through walls and anything that stands before it this morning we as your children we say we have put on our armor and we are dominating oh God Almighty we dominate anything that has been a blockade before us this morning in the name of Jesus where our finances have been blockaded we barricade we've been barricaded we will bulldoze it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ any monies that have been held up for you this morning hallelujah we break it out of the prison that Satan has locked it into we declare that your tax returns shall be released your investments that should have been manifested already will be released your investments that have gone on hold because of hackers and swindlers. Ah, God Almighty, we declare restoration and freedom in the name of Jesus. Monies that were stolen from you in the past. Ah, God, monies that you should have gotten through inheritance that you didn't get. Those are all from blockading spirits. Father, we declare today dynamite, spiritual dynamite to every blockading wall, every blockading fire, every blockading water that have been set up to stop us from walking in the fullness of your goodness. Father, we set fire from heaven upon them this morning and we declare that it is time for us to walk in blessing. Time for us to be who you have called us to be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. One more because I promised that we would start at 6, 545 with the word hallelujah. So we jump down from, uh, okay, let's, let's do spiritual temperature. Hallelujah. So we just did 10, 11. Let my spiritual temperature send terror 
to the camp of the enemy this day in the name of Jesus. Father, the spiritual temperature that you have built up this morning, the spiritual temperature, every person that is hearing my voice, God, is feeling high, is feeling high on your fire, is feeling high on your spirit. God, people are in air-conditioned rooms and they are feeling the heat of your presence, the heat of your glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, not to mention those who don't have air condition. God, it feel like the fan is not blowing cool enough. Lord, let the fire of your presence, hallelujah, 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 send terror into the camp of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Let demons and devils be passing by and say, We have to stay far from this community because someone with great fire someone with great anointing, someone who is able to dominate is in this community. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. Let's give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Men are always to pray and not to faint. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so I prophesy. I prophesy to every member of this family. If you are hearing me right now or if you're here later when you watch delayed, I prophesy to your spirit. I prophesy to your soul that prayer shall be your foundation. Our faith shall be your existence and prayer shall be your foundation. In the mind in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that you're a prayer addict. You're a prayer warrior. I prophesy to your mind, will, and emotion. And I declare that everything that happens, you will be like an automatic prayer warrior. You will be a prayer machine gun that you'll always have fun while you are praying in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There will never be a moment in time. One mighty man of God says, I cannot pray for 15 minutes. Uh, I can't pray as long as 15 minutes. But 15 minutes don't pass without me praying. I prophesy to you right now that you shall develop a prayer a prayer life. That 15 minutes don't pass without you praying. That there is never a moment in time when you are not storming heaven and heaven is not raining down blessings and favor and goodness and mercy upon you and me. In Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Glory to God most high. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, glory to God. Hallelujah. The foundation of our homes, the foundation of our family, the foundation of our bloodline is built in prayer, in our prayer closet. Come on, glory to God. What we see manifesting in our lives, in our family, in our children, and for our lives and our children happens in our prayer closet. That's where we dominate from. Hallelujah. And when we have set the stage, like Jesus, when he went away into the fourth watch, into the third watch, the fourth watch, and the fifth watch of the morning, uh, the first or the second watch, whichever watch he prayed on, when he went into his prayer closet and he prayed, he then came out and dominated. He dominated winds and waves. He dominated demons and devils. Come on, somebody. Come on. Are you connecting with this? God is saying, when we spend time in prayer, when we come out, we are able to dominate. Some of us want to dominate, but we don't want to pray. You cannot dominate, dominate without prayer. Prayer is the fuel. Prayer is the dominion mandate. Prayer is the playbook. Come on. Prayer is the manual. Hallelujah. And so we must be au fait with everything that we need to do when we go out to dominate. And that's what prayer does. It gets us in one-on-one -on -one communication with God and it causes him to download into us, especially if you can pray in the spirit or by the spirit. Oh my God, not to mention. Hallelujah. And so when we go out in the day, we are able to dominate. We're able to find favor and blessings from the Lord because we spend time in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. So we must develop a prayer life that is extensive. We pray while we're ironing, pray while we're cleaning, pray while we're using, putting laundry in the washing machine, pray while we're driving to work, pray while we're on the train or on the bus or in the car. Come on, glory to God. We got to develop a lifestyle of prayer. Prayer means you have acknowledged the presence of God and the presence of God make rich and add no sorrow. The presence of God brings joy and peace and blessings and breakthrough and favor. 
Hallelujah. And so we must always pray and not faint. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. For those who have just joined, hallelujah. I hope you caught a good portion of this time of reminiscing and this time of encouraging and need for prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We won't be silent, Sister Jackie. Hallelujah. We will take back Britain. Glory to God. We'll take back Great Britain. Britain will be great again as America will be great again as Canada will be great again because a nation can only be great when the foundation on which they are built and functioning, not just built, but functioning is the foundation of the Word of God. The foundation of the Word of God. Hear me carefully. I don't care who wants to be offended or, or upset. That's the truth of the existence of any nation. You look at the nations that fell from grace in history. Every nation that moved away from the foundation of the word of God, they crumbled after a while. And so pray, those of you who live in those three main um, nations, influential nations, English-speaking nations, Great Britain, United States of America, Canada, pray that the foundation of the word of God will not be completely eroded, which is what Satan desires, trying to pull out the rug of the word from under the nations. And if the, the foundation be destroyed, what will the righteous do? If the foundation of the word of God on which these nations and other nations have been built, not just you guys, but if the foundation of the word of God and the will and principle of God be pulled out from under the United States, Canada, and Great Britain, then they will crumble like Rome did like Persia did, like Israel did, and like many other nations of the past, Babylon, all the nations that God was not the center of their existence, they all crumbled. And AI cannot help us. Highfalutin fancy politicians cannot help us. Billions and trillions of dollars cannot help us. Only the word of God as the foundation for our nation's existence can help us to remain as a champion nation. And so pray for your nation. Not that things will change and the politicians will change. That's okay. But pray that the foundation of the word of God will never be eroded or destroyed. Because once the foundation is still set on the word, then all other things will come up from the foundation and make a difference. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. So I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to uh, remember I'm using the NIV for the time being, but I was looking last night in the um, in the in the, the King James, and it was just really stimulating me in um, for this particular passage in terms of the language that it uses compared to the NIV. But I will use the NIV <coughs> nonetheless this morning. Hallelujah. Sorry, I'm sounding a little stuffy because where I am is, is kind of hot and I can't use the fans because the fans make a lot of noise. And so the heat is causing me to get a little stuffy, but it's okay. I'm not sick. I'm healthy and well. I am great, blessed and highly favored. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it's just the heat that is causing a little bit of stuffiness um, of my sinus. But I'm great. I'm wonderful. I'm blessed and highly favored. Glory to God most high. Okay, so turn with me in your Bibles to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 7. And we're starting from verse 14. Daniel chapter 7, verse 14. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Denise, bless you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Daniel chapter 7, turn with me in your Bibles. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 14. Hallelujah. Remember what we're going after this morning. We're identifying in Daniel chapter 7 verse 14 how we got authority to dominate. How we got authority to dominate. I want to say to you that in order for you to get authority, you and I, that is, to get authority to dominate, that authority has to come from one who has that authority. Come on. So the minister of defense or the minister of national security is who gives the dominion mandate or who imparts the authority to dominate to the chief of police 
or the or the or the major general in the army come on the highest politician over that direct over that um administration over that that area gives the mandate to the one who is the head operational head and the operational head gives it to his um other operational heads underneath him and they pass that mandate down and so I want to point out to us in Daniel chapter 7 this morning that the one who has given us, oh glory to God, I feel the excitement. The angels are flapping their wings and they're saying, whoa, ah, because you know Daniel is a book covered with angelic encounters and angelic appearances. Daniel is a book where the angels were, 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 were active, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. And so when you go in the book of Daniel, just for information, angels are released as you begin to read anything in Daniel angels get perked up even your own guardian angels begin to say yes hallelujah glory to God most high holy holy is the Lord God Almighty angels get excited when you go in the book of Daniel amen and so I'm feeling the angelic excitement around as we go into this particular verse of scripture uh, right away and so, uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 14, begins like this. He was given authority. He was given authority. Come on, glory to God. So Jesus, which is who he's talking about here, was given authority. Remember, our authority comes through Jesus. He says, hallelujah, in his word, that that which you see me do... Uh, you will do an even greater works. In Luke chapter 9, verse 1, he said, the Bible says, he blew that authority through his breath upon the disciples and he sent them out two by two, come on, glory to God, to go do wondrous work by the authority that he has in him. Uh, when he was crucified, he ascended into heaven and was given a name that is above every name, a name that established authority, a name that established power, a name that establishes, hallelujah, glory. And so he who has all authority and all glory is he by his spirit that lives in us. Therefore, all authority and all glory resides in us through Jesus Christ by his spirit. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we're establishing here where our authority comes from. And it comes from one who has been given all heavenly authority. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, Jesus, he was given authority and he was given glory and he was given sovereign power. The King James Version says, and he was given glory and kingdom, kingdom power. So I, I looked at the word kingdom because not too many of us in the body of Christ are familiar with the word kingdom. We know it as it relates to Great Britain, uh, the kingdom of Great Britain and the queen and the king and uh, now just the king. Uh, well, there's a queen because the king is married, but you know what I'm talking about. We know of it from the, the natural perspective. And when we look in the Bible, we know that Saul was the first king over Israel and David was a king, Solomon was a king and all these other kings who did evil in the sight of the Lord. But we're not talking about that kind of king hallelujah we're talking about a king that rules in the spirit because we are all kings and priests but we don't have a castle like 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 the king of england we don't have of, of, of these kinds of um, amenities and resources like the king but we have the kingly a hey, jesus we have the kingly anointing we have the kingly authority we have the kingly power come on and the reason we don't have the things that the natural kings have is because we have not come to the place of believing in the authority that we have in the spirit to call forth as kings that which is not as though it were. Come on, am I getting to somebody's heart this morning? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And so when I looked at the word kingdom in the, in the Hebrew, it's the word malku, malku, malku. M-A-L-K-U-W is the Hebrew spelling and the breakdown for English translation is M-A-L-K-O-O, -O, Malku, Malku, amen? And Malku means the kingly realm. 
So those of us who have been brought into the kingdom of God, come on, Laura. I'm saying to you this morning, Laura, you have been brought by Jesus. Come on, somebody on, on Instagram, somebody on TikTok. Come on, you have been living in Lodibar for too long, but God has brought you into the kingly realm. God has brought you into the realm, and because you have been dependent on someone else to intercede for you, because you have been dependent on a natural David to call you and to bring you out of Lodibar, to take you into the king's palace, to give you a room to sleep in, and to give you food at the king's table. And God is saying, you are the one that is supposed to be doing that for others. Others are not supposed to be doing that for you. I, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, have already done that for you. I have made you a king. So you're not like Mephibosheth. Are you hearing me? Mephibosheth was from the kingly lines of Jonathan. Mephibosheth had king in his blood. Mephibosheth had king in his blood from birth. We were born again, not like Mephibosheth, but we were born again in the palace. Oh, somebody not hearing me. We were born again in the palace. That means we God didn't have to take us from Lodibar. When he saved us, he saved us from Lodibar. So as we became king in the palace, Mephibosheth was a king in the palace and then was sent to Lodibar. So he had to be restored from Lodibar by David. God is saying that we are not Mephibosheth, we are David. Ah, oh, Jesus. Woo! Somebody should get excited this morning. We have been behaving like we are Mephibosheth. We have been saying, oh, woe is me. I am poverty stricken. I am sick. I am, I am this. I am that. I can't make it. I can't get married. I don't get any breakthroughs. Why my business not flourishing? Why, 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 why? Because we are thinking like Mephibosheth instead of like David. David did, hey, hallelujah. Even when David had a low moment, when he said, why are you downcast, oh, my soul? He then had the answer, hope thou in God. As a king, and we're operating in the kingly realm, we know where our hope is. Uh, Mephibosheth had no hope. David had to be his hope. I'm here to tell you this morning that no man is your hope. No man will help you to cope. Man only wants to give you a rope, but God wants to give you a palace. Hallelujah. Somebody be encouraged this morning. Hallelujah. God has already given you a palace. Man, you don't need no rope. You don't need to climb up on no rope to get into your palace. You have a key, and that key is Jesus. That key is your dominion mandate. That key is to dominate. So walk up to your door like a king and say, open. Walk from the place where you are and where you have been and just walk towards your palace and know that trumpets will sound and they will say, long live the king because you were born again into a kingly realm. Hallelujah. And so it says, in the, it, it means kingly realm. So where it says in the, in, the, in the NIV version, sovereign power, that means sovereign power operates from the kingly realm. We have sovereign power when we're functioning from the kingly realm. Is somebody hearing me? Sovereign power is the only power that was given to Jesus. When it says he was given authority, glory, and sovereign power, if Jesus Christ of Nazareth by his Holy Spirit lives in us, then we have sovereign power. Come on, somebody. Say amen to that. We have sovereign power. And what can defeat sovereign power? Hallelujah. It also says that we have kingly authority, which we know because here the kingly authority was given to Jesus. And so if Jesus was given kingly authority and he has given us his spirit, then kingly authority is ours. Why are we operating like, 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 like um, eunuchs? Why are we operating like office attendants, like helpers, cleaning the palace when it is our palace? And God has given us all the help that we need to take care of everything, to bring us grapes and a platter, to bring us whatever food we want to eat, 10 course, 15 course meals. Come on. We've been living like paupers when God says we're supposed to live like kings. Glory to God most high. But our fears, our pride, our greed, our slothfulness, our lust, the things that we have embraced by the influence of Lucifer 
has caused us not to be in the palace. But this morning I say to you in the name of Jesus Christ, everything that has blockaded you, everything that has blockaded you from the outside and the inside, that has stopped you from taking up your throne, taking up your place in your palace, taking up your place in the kingly realm. I rip it off of you this morning. I rebuke and discharge everything that blocks, hallelujah, you from overtaking and recovering all. I rebuke and discharge it from your life and from your family and from your bloodline in the name of Jesus Christ. Your descendants shall live in the palace of the king. Your descendants shall function from the kingly realm in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and they shall function from it because you live in it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. 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 It also says that there is, um, it, it has territorial and administrative dominion. So one of the things that represents kingdom or sovereign power is territorial or administrative dominion. Amen? So we have territorial power. What is a territory? A territory is any, for example, I live in a place called Mona Heights. And so the whole territory of Mona Heights, because I live here, I have authority over all territory of Mona Heights. Because I live in Jamaica, I have all territory over Kingston. Come on, glory to God. And I can make decrees and declarations and petitions on behalf of Jamaica because I am Jamaican born and I live here. Are you hearing me, somebody? So it starts with your smallest. You have territorial and administrative authority as a monarch over your family, your bloodline, your house, your home where you live. Come on. Over the neighborhood that you live in. Come on. Over the nation that you live in. Come on. Hallelujah. Or should I say over the city first? And then over your nation. Now, as you get up even more, based on your rank in the realm of the spirit, your authority shifts from being able to dominate to being able to inter intercede. So your authority can shift from straight dominate to, to, to straight intercede. So for example, if you are if you're a pastor, if you're just a pastor, and I don't mean that disparagingly, if you're a pastor, your authority is solidly dominating over, for example, your, um, your, your, your city. But over your nation, that would probably require an apostle. Just as an example, so you get what I'm saying. But as a pastor, you can intercede. Father, my nation is in trouble. Father, you said that my nation is, I must intercede for my, 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 my leaders. You said that I must cover my leaders. You said, oh God Almighty, that the heart, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And you will turn it whichever way you seek to turn it. And so, Father, I'm beseeching you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Turn the hand of our politicians. Turn the hearts of our politicians. Opposition and ruling junta. Father, change their hearts in this season. That they will not accept the idioms and the idiosyncrasies and the disgusting ways of living that are coming down the pipeline. Father, cause them to stand strong and to be resolute, to set their faces like flint, not to be influenced or cajoled, not to be bribed by those who have a wicked agenda. Father, cause them, yeah, like that, as a pastor you can, as an apostle, which is the high office of authority over nations, come on, or as a prophet, as a call to nations, because some prophets are not called to nations. Hear me. Amen? Some prophets are not called to nations. Some prophets are called to the local church. Some prophets are called to the community. Some prophets are called to the city. And some prophets are called to the nation. And then some prophets are called to nations. Are you hearing me? So a prophet that is called to, na to the nation can speak by God's decree over the nation. Elisha and Elijah were prophets called to the nation. Uh, Samuel was called to the nation. Come on, glory to God. Hallelujah. But it would seem, and don't hold me to this, I, I, um, but it would seem just because of, of, of this example that Jonah was only called to, to, to Nineveh. Come on. It seemed as if Jonah was only called to Nineveh. Just to give you a kind of perspective. I'm not saying this as doctrine. I, I, I don't know this. So please don't draw me over the coals, um, scholars. Just because of the thread that we're on and where we're going, I'm using this as an example. 
but I'm not teaching this as a fact because I didn't think about it, I didn't study it, I don't know this as a fact. But based on what we see in that one book of Jonah, what he did, hallelujah, what, what Jonah did for, for Nineveh, um, it would seem as if he was just called to Nineveh, amen, to do that, that, that job, just for the context of this perspective. But Samuel was called to the nation of Israel. Come on, glory to God, amen. The Apostle Paul was called to various nations. Rome, come on, Galatia, Corinth, come on, hallelujah. And so apostles are called and some prophets are called to nations. When they are called to nations, you speak over nations. Father, I thank you that every cloud that has gathered over Jamaica is destroyed by fire. Every cloud gathered over America, over England, over Great Britain, over Canada, Father, fire upon them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against these nations shall prosper. Lord, you have given them to me. Ah, God Almighty, and I stand on the uh, resolute that they will not be destroyed because you have that mandate, that dominion mandate over nations as an apostle or as a prophet. Amen? Hallelujah. So pastors, are, pastors tend to be localized even if they get permission or if they're invited to go and speak in these various countries, they are still localized based on their office as pastor because the pastors are shepherds and a shepherd normally shepherds flock in, in, um, in a very intimate and unique way. Amen. Praise God. I hope you're following. And so we have um, territorial and administrative dominion. So we can administer dominion and territorial dominion depending on what office we hold. But every single one of us at base perspective has territorial and administrative authority over our own personal lives, over our marriages, over our family, come on, over our home and over the community that we live in. That's the first base, start. So regardless of who you are, hear me carefully again, you have territorial and administrative sovereignty and authority over yourself. Come on, you can speak to self. Self, I command you to think right, act right, live right. I curse the spirit of anger in me, frustration in me, rebellion in me. I curse every spirit of rejection, low self-esteem. You have authority over you first, come on, over your marriage, over your family, your children, and your children's children, your members of your bloodline, you have authority over your house, your home where you live, and you have authority over the community that you live in. That's the extent of every single natural person's authority in the kingdom. Are you following me, people of God? And so everything that happens within the realm of that border, that happens against you or against your community or against your... I remember one night... Um, we don't have it as much anymore because we've been consistently praying. But I remember when we just moved here, things were happening and we didn't understand our authority in the community. And, and, and spirits would move through the community with an intent to do stuff. They used to walk down the road behind us um, like, like a parade, like a carnival parade, a procession. They would just take over the road and you would hear the dogs going crazy. They would come into this community, this little gated community that we live in, and they would seek whom they may devour. And, and Pastor Marsha and I would just get into prayer and into warring and into declaring and decreeing. And when we realized that we have authority over this community, after we realized that, we shut down everything that they, that they, they, they were coming with. And now they stopped coming because they realized that some people who knows their authority and their territory are now here. So they circle us now and they go elsewhere. Everywhere that you live, they must circle. They must circle and go elsewhere in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They must not come after your children. They must not come after your finance. They must not come after anything that concerns you unless you are not on the wall watching and taking dominion. That's the only way they can take over. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, hallelujah. So he says that um, you've been given sovereign power over all peoples. Come on. Hallelujah. And nations. Nations. So Jesus was given sovereignty. Now you're seeing how it, how it ties in to what I'm saying. Jesus was given all power and glory, sovereign power over all peoples. So Jesus has the ultimate office. His office 
and those who he designates that to deliberately, come on, has power over all peoples and over nations. There is hardly a human being alive that Jesus has given all power over all people and all nations. There is hardly any human being that I believe, this is me personally saying this now, that God can trust with all power over all peoples and all nations. And so that's why he has segments. So that's why uh, Peter and, 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 um, and John would go to, would deal with Israel. Paul would deal with the Gentiles. Peter would deal to some extent with some Gentiles. Hallelujah. And, and Philip and Stephen and other guys would deal with different people and different nations and, and, and different places. Amen. Hallelujah. But no one person was given absolute authority over all people and all nations. That position is reserved for Jesus who no guile, no sin, no evil, no wickedness has found in him. Amen. Hallelujah. But it is from him that we receive our authority. So whether he gives us authority just over our family, our house, our community, and our nation, or he just gives us uh, whatever limited authority, it is over some people. So I've been given authority over what? My family, my marriage, my children. Come on. Um, the, 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 the persons who God has given me to, to watch over in church. And my community that's the responsibility that he has given me if he promotes me to an apostle that responsibility expands automatically by apostolic um, ordination that authority extend expands automatically to my nation automatically to my nation then God now decides by his own power and authority if that authority extends to nations amen hallelujah so God gives authority over peoples and nations and who he so see fits he delegates that authority to in to, to these persons he says and men of every language worshipped him men of every language worshipped him now this is important one of the things that is is is, is detrimental to the modern day persons who Jesus has imparted himself by his spirit into and given authority over nation or nations, what has happened is they are taking in some instances, not everyone, but too many have been given this authority and have taken God's worship. This worship was reserved only for Jesus. It says every men worship men of every language worshiped him. Every human being is designed specifically to worship only Jesus, even those who he has given authority and power to. Come on, amen. So he alone is to be worshipped. But how do we benefit from his worship? The worship that Jesus receives because he lives in us manifests as benefits to us manifests as benefits to us so the blessings that is why when you give your tithe and offering and seed to the man of God who is a representative of God watch this and I'm taking it down now into scripture when you give your offering and seed and thanks and serving and you you, 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 you buy a drink or um, or, a, or a outfit you go to foreign and you're in a clue and a store and you said um, you know this look like a size that pastor Marsha would wear and you buy that for her that is a form of worship of God but manifesting through the carrier of God in the woman of God are you hearing me amen so you don't worship the person but because Jesus doesn't need gifts he doesn't need the he doesn't need money he doesn't need clothes and shoes part of your worship you say thank you Jesus I bless you Jesus for your prayers and for, for your blessing and your favor and for answered prayers the person who prays and intercedes and stands in the gap and is the, the one who you follow as he follow or she follows Christ is the one that gets the natural things the one you give the natural things to so you give the adoration and the worship and the glory to the Lord Jesus Christ for he alone gets that and the natural things you give to his representative who is really him as well. You're giving it to the God who is in that man of God. So if the man of God or the woman of God is behaving hideous and satanic 
and unchristlike, you have no obligation to give them anything. Not your money, not your time, not your resources. The only thing you're obligated to give them is your love and your prayers. Can I set the record straight? The only thing you are always permanently obligated to give to any man, whether they are good or evil, is prayers, come on, hallelujah, and love. The Bible says, oh, no man, nothing but to love. So prayers and love you must give to every single human being regardless. But adoration and demonstration of gratitude, you give to those who are demonstrating the glory of God. So I give you this, this scripture reference. P Paul wanted nothing from anyone. He would get everything from the Holy Spirit and by his, 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 his own trade, he would take care of himself and he would just give, give, give to the people. But when the Philippians identified the Jesus Christ of Nazareth in him by the Holy Spirit. They said, I want to sow into that like my like the ancestors sowed into Samuel, sowed into Elijah, sowed into Elisha. It wasn't about Elijah, Elisha, or Samuel. It was about the God that was working through them. And so when they gave things to them, these people, the Bible says, do not go before the prophet empty-handed. That means an authentic prophet, not a charlatan. Come on. Not a schema or a schema, an authentic prophet of God that hears from God, that walks in the will and purpose of God, that has the fruit of the Spirit of God and manifests the, the, the gifts of God. That's the prophet that you should never go before empty handed. Not a schema, schema, or a money sucking um, person who pretends to be a prophet. Amen? You get it, right? Glory to God. And so um, it, it, it's important for us when we are dealing and interacting with these people, we one, ask God, is this your representative? Because I do not want to cast my pearl before swine. Is this your representative? And make sure that you are giving into an altar because we represent an altar. People represent an altar. So, Lord, am I placing my resources? Am I placing my tithe, my offering, my seed? Come on, my blessings, my gifts on an altar that represents you. You must ask God that. Do not just get up and give because someone speaks and you feel excited. Because someone has the gift of gab. They could easily just be a motivational speaker using the Bible like you use a, a, a marketing book. And do very well at it. You must ask God. Is this someone I can sow a seed into? Because the ability to dominate is also dependent on what you appreciate. Come on. Whoever is teaching you to dominate is where you must appreciate. Glory to God. Amen. And so um, that worship, as uh, the, the worship, worshiping him is the worship that we all give to Jesus but that worship also manifests, let me just tie that up, also manifests in who Jesus has given to you as one who will sow into you, pray for you, pray with you, teach you the word, and walk holy and upright before you so that you can walk holy and upright as well. Worship to God is also giving and appreciating that person who God has put before you to go and to lead the way. Understand? So you're not worshipping the person, you're worshipping God also by giving and blessing and praying for the person who God has put before you to lead the way. Amen? You understand that? Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so he says, his dominion is an everlasting dominion. So God is saying the dominion mandate that he gave us is everlasting. It cannot be, he says, our gifts and talents are without repentance. And so he gave us dominion mandate as a gift. He gave us the dominion mandate as a gift. It's something that he received, Jesus, and it's something he has given to us. And it is everlasting. And so whether we use it or not, whether we pursue, overtake, and recover all or not, whether we, whether we stand in the gap in our household for our family, for our extended family, for our children, our children's children or not, it doesn't mean it goes away. It's still there. Come on, somebody. It's still there. It is everlasting. It cannot move. It cannot change. It cannot be taken back. 
God himself cannot take it back from us because he himself says, what I have given you is without repentance. I can't take it back. Come on, glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we must know that all we have to do is learn how to use what we have because what God has given us will be there for us to use. Whether we use it or not is up to us, but it's there for us to use. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Glory to God. Almost out of time, so let me rush through. Um, and so he says, his dominion is an everlasting dominion. And uh, dominion, that will not pass away. So we already did that. It will not pass away. It's permanent. It's, it's there for eternity. Hallelujah. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. His what? His royalty. His is 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 uh, um his royal realm what we say his authority and territorial administration come on his monarchy hallelujah his kingly realm will never be destroyed i'm saying to you that they're talking about jesus that his kingly realm will never be destroyed but that same jesus whose kingly realm cannot be destroyed cannot be delayed derailed or denied he lives in us and we function from that same kingly realm and therefore if we're in poverty lack and insufficiency come on somebody you need to understand that if you're going to teach prosperity gospel this is the foundation this is the principle this is the direction that prosperity gospel should be taught from ah because if you are prosperous as a king if you are prosperous in the kingly realm if you are prosperous in righteousness holiness and truth you'll be prosperous in the natural people are teaching in the in in, in some context that all you have to do is bring a big seed bring empty out your bank account and bring a big seed and you will get prosperity the devil is a liar that's not true in order to prosper you have to operate in the kingly realm kings are not poor oh somebody got to hear me you got to operate in the kingly realm do you still have to sow from the kingly realm yes but you must have what to sow you cannot sow and then be left in poverty and think that you're a king a king is is never poverty stricken ah let me tell you something the queen of sheba left from ethiopia and she came with more wealth than anyone else has ever brought to solomon but she was not poor she was not left broke busted or disgusted her bank account was not emptied the wise men that came from the east when they came they gave jesus more than he could have used for his lifetime oh for 33 years he was spending out of what the, the, the wise men brought and they were not broke after that oh somebody not hearing me this morning if your pastor or any minister on any platform or podium is telling you bring your last in your bank account comma or you better ask god because i'm telling you that god when he gives you you give out of that a percentage and more is left and more grows on it that's the principle can god ask you for everything that is in there of course but that way and that time, God is not testing your money. He's testing your heart. If God asks you to give everything that is in your bank account, he's not asking you to sow under normal circumstances. He's checking your heart to see if your heart is set on money. Are you hearing me? So it's a different process completely. But when God is asking you to sow into his kingdom, to sow into his man servant or woman servant, he's asking you to sow out of what he has given you. He's asking you to sow like, like, like um, Queen Asheba sowed to Solomon, like Solomon sowed back to Queen Asheba. Out of your abundance as a king. Because when you sow all of what you have into another king, that king rides away off into the sunset with everything that they need, five planes, 16 houses. Come on, bank account bigger than Bob Marley funeral. And they alone benefit. That's not God's way. God's way is if you give, it shall be given back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. When a king brings a token to another king, that king, hallelujah, is not the only one that is blessed. The king that brings his blessing or her blessing, queen, is also blessed exponentially. So we have to learn and understand that this kingdom that we function in is the kingdom of blessing. And as we bless from our blessing, more blessing comes upon us. If you don't have what to bless, then you're not functioning 
in your kingly authority and dominion as you should. And that needs to change. And so we need to identify what position am I in? Am I able to sow a seed into whatever it is that God is doing and still have left to do what I am supposed to? If not, then you're not operating from the kingly realm. And you need to start saying, Father, I need to sow into your kingdom like the Philippians sowed into Paul. I need resources. Your word says you give seed to the sower. And so give me seed that I may sow. Make me a blessing. Make me a kingdom financer. Lord, my kingdom that you have given me opportunity and, and authority to rule over is not a broke kingdom because my kingdom represents you in the name of Jesus Christ. So you got to tell God that no kingdom that he has established is a broke kingdom. And each individual one of us represents a kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Or a portion of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. All right. We're going to stop there for this morning. I think we have done it. It says in one that it will never be destroyed. God's kingdom will never be destroyed. We may not function as we should, but we will never be destroyed. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope that you got it. I hope that you are encouraged and ready to take on what the enemy has stolen from you and from your bloodline in the past. And we are recovering all and we're going to flow in the glow of the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. 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 What a mighty God we serve. All right. It's time for communion and prayer to close for this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your dominion mandate and, and, and for the, your, by your spirit, we will dominate. I thank you, Lord, that we are not like Mephibosheth in Lodibar, but we are like David in the palace. I thank you, Lord, that you will cause us to see those who are uh, not at the place where they need to be. Those who have found themselves in Lodibar, though they are supposed to be in their own palace. I thank you, Lord, that you will cause us to be a solution to what ails the world to what ails mankind, to what ails even those who you have made kings and queens and that are functioning below where they need to be. I thank you, Lord, that every member of this Fourth Watch family will be blessed to be a blessing to those around and that, like David, we will send for the Mephibosheths that are in our family, our community, and even our nation and bring them into the kingly realm so that they may function as they should. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Sanctify and consecrate these emblems, O God, we pray. May they be to our bodies blessings, health, strength, prosperity, and good success. And may we walk in the fullness of your goodness according to your will and purpose. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and he said, Eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Courtney, Courtney on TikTok said, thank you very much. I've learned a lot. God bless you. Thank you, Courtney, for that uh, endorsement. I, I, I give all the praise and honor to God. And I thank him for the opportunity to be used as a vessel to bring light and illumination and maturity to his people. So God bless you. Thank you for saying that. Appreciate you. And God appreciates you too. And a double portion of that which you desire to go forth and to be and to do for God's good pleasure has been released upon you by just this comment that you have made uh, from the Spirit of God. God bless you, Brother Courtney. Hallelujah. And likewise, he took the cup. He blessed it and took a sup and he said, drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much. We're coming to the end of the month of June, the sixth month, the month of man. We're going into July, the seventh month, the month, hallelujah of new beginning not new beginning the month of completion and the month of perfection hallelujah and so we're looking forward to it and we're going to be doing great and mighty work as as the lord tarries 
by his spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, for spending time in the presence of the Lord, hearing and participating in what God is doing in this season. You are blessed and highly favored and you function from the heavenly realm, from the realm of power, from the realm of authority, from the realm, from the territorial realm and the administrative realm. You are part of the monarchy and you cannot be defeated. Amen. Hallelujah. Raise your hands for the blessings. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Go forth, my family, and have an amazing day. God's way. For our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day. His way. In Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus love you. And we love the whole I want it to. On behalf of Pastor Marsha Wade, I'm Rowan Wade saying, have a super fantastic day. Hallelujah. And just expect, be expectant of God's good news, God's favor, God's blessing upon you and your family. Remember to do something good for someone today. Call someone, encourage them, pray for them. Give, speak a word of encouragement into their soul because that is how Jesus did while he was on earth amen god bless you have a good one guys it is well bless hallelujah